I'm Amy Marks, and I'm the head of industrialized construction strategy and evangelism at Autodesk, also known as the queen of prefab. I'm going around the world to some of the coolest factories, and I'm meeting with owners, designers, builders, and manufacturers to get a behind the scenes look at what goes into fabricating the future. Join me, the queen of prefab. Yes? Hey, I wanted to let you know, you've got to leave in 15 minutes. Oof. You're going to Vinsky and Snyder. Okay. Perfect. Hey, I'm so glad you come down here today. Thank you, thank you for having me. We have some really cool stuff to say, a lot of prefabricated piping, and, and uh, but the stuff we're really excited about is uh, the way we're kind of trying to move to this manufacturing world. And we have some really cool products that are in design. We're actually using Inventor and trying to import that to Revit. So I'm hoping we get to show you some of that as well. Well, let's go check it out. All right, let's go. Okay. went to our shop for the last 10 years, all this stuff would look the same, but we redesign it every time, so, <laughs> which is nuts, right? So That makes no sense. It yes. makes no sense. So yes, we need to learn how to modularize these things, make them products, yes. and then have these products just be inserted. I love it. So what's cool about what they're doing, they don't necessarily have all the greatest automation yet on their factory floor, but what they have is really great tech and a mindset to productize. That's gonna make all the difference for them. Amy, this is our copper manufacturing plant. We have the raw material we stage here. It's a tiger saw cutting machine. It can cut up to 800 feet per hour. Wow. With one, really just one person with minimum waste. That's amazing. And look, you're getting young people into the space because I'm sure he would rather work on this machine than anything else. And he wants to see cool stuff. Did you see that? The man running that machine, that automation, he's 24 years old. He told me he's excited because they just got that machine a month ago and he wants to work with robotics and automation. He doesn't want to hang drywall. That's what he told me. We need to attract a diverse talent pool to this industry. That's how we're going to get it. One worker at a time, somebody who wants to work with tech and they want to work with these types of machines. That was really fantastic to see. Hey, Karen. I have a meeting with who? So, here's the story. I'm going to be meeting with Bradley Lucanic. He's the CEO of Canon Design. Why a designer for industrialized construction? Well, it's all about design for manufacturing and assembly. And by the way, these are architects that fab. That's right. As we see the lines blurring in the industry, these guys are actually fabbing, not just designing. And they fab even for other architects. How cool is that? Hey! Amy! I'm so happy to see you. It's good to see you too. So tell me everything that's going on. I want to hear all the goods. So we've been really busy moving beyond just architecture and engineering and into manufacturing a prefab. I don't believe this. Architects that are fabbing, you made my day. Come yes, on, Yes, we're doing show me. fabbing, we're doing software. We're, we're realizing that DFMA and prefab are the future, and that's we why that. we're moving towards it. I think it's really important for people to understand DFMA. First, DFMA stands for Design for Manufacturing and Assembly. Design for Manufacturing means designing things for ease of manufacturing. Then you have Design for Assembly. Those are choices you make as a designer or an engineer that make things easier to ship and handle and assemble on site. Here's the problem. Lots of people say if you just embrace DFMA, the result will be you'll get more prefabrication. That's unfortunately not that true. If you think about a building broken down into assemblies of pieces and parts, let's say a precast wall. That precast wall might have 45 DFMA specific instructions for that 
manufacturer that element. Now, multiply that by the number of different elements that you might have, and then now multiply that by the number of proprietary systems that are out there, and it would literally make an architect's head explode. The only way we're doing DFMA right now, and you keep hearing people say, move that supply chain up into the front of the process. Well, guess what? I'm 49. I don't want to be here that much longer at the front of the process. I want AI and machine learning to take what I know and actually use algorithms to blow that out. I don't want to keep doing DFMA by hand. I want to enable that through the framework of our software so truly we can use machine learning and AI for things like generative design to make things better. And that's the only way we're going to really get fantastic optimized prefabrication. I love that DFMA does not mean prefab. It's those choices that you make that enable of optimized prefabrication if you do it right. That's fantastic. I cannot wait to see this in person. Amy, you're exactly right. That's why you are the queen of prefab. Aww. Let me take you outside. I got to show you a few things. I want to see. Let's go. So Amy, welcome to my city. It's a blend of old and new, and could you just imagine with all of the buildings that need to be built between now and 2060 and the transformation that'll happen, if we could apply the DFMA process to all of it? Amazingly, as Brad Lukanek looked out across the landscape, he said, imagine with all the buildings we have coming up, if we could apply DFMA and prefabrication and industrialized construction to that landscape. What I think is really cool is that there's already prefabricated assemblies and modules in that landscape. So it's kind of the best marketing and the worst marketing for industrialized construction that really it's invisible to the naked eye. What's really interesting about this discussion is we need to hang out more. I mean, there's so much to be learned, and I think in the end, that's really the difference. We gotta get everybody who represents the trades together and the whole construction build process. I just love playing matchmaker. You see those guys, they have to talk. They rarely get an opportunity to talk. Architects, engineers, construction managers, everyone in the ecosystem has to be honest about where they have pains, where they see benefit, where they can help each other. We take this collaboration very seriously at Autodesk. I know, and we know, it's about technology, it's about people, it's about getting around the table, as we say, and everybody getting their chance to speak. I'm so happy to have you all tonight and getting all together to talk about this. Thanks, Aim. I'm so excited to see this manufacturing facility. And welcome to Environmental Air Systems. Hey, Bill, thanks so much for having me here again. Amy, this is our visual management system that we use on the floor. 